Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is Jacob Toman. Welcome to Toman's Tome as we wrap up our Advent series this year. We are taking a look at peace with God. How is it that we can have peace with God? How is it that we know that we have peace with God? And what assurances do we have that that peace is both for now in this life and in eternal life? Well, those of you who are new to the channel, you can like, subscribe, and ding the bell for more discussions just like this one. And if at any point in time you've got a comment or a thought feel free to drop it down below in the comments well today we're taking a look at a very familiar passage to many of us it is of course the angels coming and visiting the shepherds and during this particular moment in the story of the birth of Christ Jesus we are given this beautiful wonderful declaration of peace being offered from God to humanity so let's read this together starting in verse 8 of Luke chapter 2 and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby watching over their flocks at night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you he is the Messiah the Lord this is to be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Well, how do we know that we have peace with God? If we were to take a look in our Bibles, we could jump straight to Romans chapter 5, verse 1, that says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That would be a pretty succinct answer, that we know that we have peace with God because of Jesus. That's a Sunday school answer, but it's the right answer, that we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. But how does that all work out? What are the mechanics of that, and how does that play out in reality and in real time? For us, as a people who once were sinners and were told in Romans 5.8, who were once enemies of God, who were once opposed to God, utterly incompatible with the holiness, the glory of God and his righteousness, we who were sinners are now counted as righteous. How is it that Christ Jesus' work counts towards us to create peace with God? Well, peace results from reconciliation with God. Reconciliation with God is accomplished through the work of a mediator. If you've ever seen multiple children inside maybe a nursery or maybe inside a playroom, you know that oftentimes one child is going to take a toy from another child, and reconciliation is only accomplished through the work of a mediator. So a mediator acts with both parties' interests in mind and Christ Jesus is the only mediator capable of representing both the interests of God and the interests of humanity in 1st Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 we're told there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind that is the man Christ Jesus in Philippians 2 5 we're given a little bit more in depth about this about Christ Jesus's mission as the reconciling mediator between man kind and between God. Philippians 2.5 says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. In other words, what this author of Philippians is about to tell us is the mindset of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross that Christ Jesus as he came to earth he took on a mentality which put himself in between these two warring parties in between the rebellion party of mankind and the righteous party of God and he stood in between in order to bridge the gap and create peace through mediatory reconciliation. Well, the peace of Christ Jesus that we have today as Christians, which is great news and good news for us to celebrate, not just once a year, but every day of our lives, is a peace that produces security. Jesus has a track record all throughout the Gospels, and of course God the Father and the Trinity all throughout the Bible has a track record of showing himself to be a reconciling God with his people. And Jesus, of course, embodies that by working with people and reconciling them with their biggest present need 
and then pointing them towards his reconciling mediatory work for their biggest eternal need. A couple of different examples popped into mind as I was thinking about this and meditating on peace with God here this Advent season. In Mark chapter 7, we're told about the removal of an evil spirit, an immediate need, as well as the healing of a blind man who had an immediate need. In Mark chapter 9, there is, of course, the healing of the boy who's possessed by a spirit and it's been hurting him his entire life, throwing him into fires, throwing him uh, and causing him to cut himself and to hurt himself and to even injure others. There's many who are scared of him. And Jesus heals this immediate need. He brings peace to an immediate present need. In Mark chapter 10, there's the blind man who calls out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And of course, Jesus, the son of David, the God-man, the one who reconciled and mediated between God and man, comes to this blind man and heals his biggest present need. He provides peace and brings security in the moment of this man's present need. In John chapter 4, of course, Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob is a one of the most famous passages in all of the Bible, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Maybe you've never read the Bible even, but you've heard of the Samaritan woman. This is, of course, an incredibly famous passage where Jesus recognizes all of the various present needs of the Samaritan woman and then points her towards her eternal need and that he has wisdom and reconciling words and work for her both in her present needs and in her eternal needs continuing in john chapter 4 there's jesus's healing of the son of a court official who has heard that jesus has come into the region and so he goes and he travels to jesus asking that his biggest present need would be reconciled and would be something that would produce a security that it were, there would be a healing and a change in the circumstance and jesus continues to show that he has a track record of bringing peace to people in their biggest present need and providing security. That security isn't just a present security, but also an eternal security. In fact, in most of the examples that I was able to dig through, I simply couldn't help but notice that Jesus isn't just curing people of their immediate needs and then saying, go away, but oftentimes he will cure their immediate needs, but then there's a bigger point to what he's doing where he'll often provide commentary either to the disciples or to a watching crowd or maybe to the person who has had their biggest present need met. Jesus oftentimes points to them that not only is their present need solved and brought to peace because of his reconciling work, but also their eternal need, just as their present need was met, their eternal need will be met through the same person, through Christ Jesus and through his work. In John chapter 14, Jesus, of course, says that he is going to prepare a place for his people. Earlier in the Gospel of John, Jesus says that eternal life was given by Jesus to those to whom the Father has given him. In other words, that this life isn't all that there is, but rather that there is an eternal life that is guaranteed, an eternal security that is purchased through the reconciling mediatory work of Christ Jesus. In John chapter 4, of course, during that famous disposition and, and discussion between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, he says that he is an everlasting well that provides eternal life, not just present life, but eternal life. In Mark chapter 10, he says, Jesus says, all who leave father and brother and mother and sister for Jesus's sake, for his sake, will inherit eternal life. Then, of course, in Luke 23, verses 39 through 43, it's simply one of the best extended pieces of Scripture that we have that is explicit about Jesus saving people from their biggest present need and providing security for their biggest eternal need. So the thieves on the cross are having this conversation, and one of them is, of course, ridiculing Jesus. And I've got it here printed out in front of me from Luke chapter 23, starting in verse 39, one of the criminals who were being hanged railed at Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. If there was ever a moment in time where Jesus could have been flippant or sarcastic or maybe even just exasperated and frustrated, he could have turned to that thief and said, You want me to save us? That's what I'm doing. In the moment, on the cross, by not coming down off the cross, I'm saving us, not just, not just now, but for eternity. Continuing in verse 40, The other thief rebuked this thief, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we, indeed, justly so. 
for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And the thief said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Those thieves didn't need more time in this present life. They needed a savior for eternity. Their biggest present need was, in fact, an eternal need. And indeed, for you and for me, our biggest present needs, someday all of us will indeed pass away from this life and into the next. And our biggest need in those moments will be an eternal security that is dependent on whether we are enemies of God or whether we are at peace with God through Jesus Christ. Well, peace with God is something to be celebrated this Christmas. I hope this is something that you are celebrating with your loved ones and those around you, sharing the good news that Christ Jesus is our Prince of Peace, that he is God with us. And just as the angels declared in Luke 2, verse 14, glory be to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased, we can be celebratory and assured that Christ Jesus, through his reconciling mediatory work, has secured peace with God for you and for me, for us who have placed our faith in him. Thanks so much for being a part of our Advent series this particular year of 2019. And I pray that in the upcoming year, we have a wonderfully blessed year where we have opportunities, lots of opportunities, to continue to learn new and exciting things together right here on Tome and Stone.